In this video, we're going to discuss dimensional analysis. Now, dimensional analysis is really just a fancy way of saying unit conversion. So dimensional analysis is just taking some result and converting it from one unit to another, right? So this is taking a given result taking a given result and converting it from one unit to the other. Right, so in the introductory video, I talked a lot about bridging, chemistry being a bridge between the microscopic and the macroscopic, right? So. Uh, one of the things that we do uh, is, and why we use dimensional analysis is we may have like a, a macroscopic sample of something. So let's say we have a certain number of grams of a sample. And as chemists, we want to provide microscopic explanations. We may want to know how many atoms are in a given, you know, grams of a particular sample. And so there's gonna have to be a conversion done there. We're gonna have to go from a macroscopic unit, grams, to a microscopic unit in atoms, right? So there's there's gonna have to be some conversion. We'll have to know how many atoms make up a gram. And that's gonna be a huge part of, uh, of chemistry is, is doing these types of conversions. Uh, in a more practical example of what you guys may have experienced, you know, uh, let's say you want to put wallpaper on a wall, right? Um, you, the wallpaper is sold in a particular, uh, you know, panel that's a certain number of inches wide and long. And so you might have to know how many panels do I need to buy to cover a particular wall that's measured in square footage, right? So there's always these types of conversions that you have to do, uh, whether you're cognizant of it or not. Um, and this is all governed by dimensional analysis. So let's take an example. So let's say we want to do the following conversion. Let's say we have 400 uh, or 45.3 centimeters, right? And we want to know how many millimeters is that, right? So we know we have a certain uh, object that's 45.3 centimeters long, and we want to convert that to millimeters. So what we'll need is a conversion factor, right? Conversion factor. And basically what the conversion factor does is relates one unit of a particular uh, dimension to another, right? So the conversion factor here would be one centimeter is equal to 10 millimeters, right? So you have one base unit of centimeters that's now related to millimeters, right? Now, one question that students always run into once, once they have the conversion factor and they know they want to do a conversion, they, they know the total that they're trying to convert, you always ask yourself, well, do I divide by this number or do I multiply? Do I divide? Do I multiply? You, you don't really know what to do with this conversion factor. Well, a way to make sure that you never get this wrong is to treat these units like you would treat algebra, right? In algebra, you know, certain variables cancel out to give you a result when you put them in, in fractions, right? The same thing happens here with units to make sure that your units cancel out to give you the proper output units. So let me show you how this goes. So we have our 45.3 centimeters, right? So I put 45.3 centimeters here. What we wanna do is multiply that by our conversion factor, but do it in such a way that the original units cancel out and the new units are left over. So what we'll do is say, this is our conversion factor. We know that there are 10 millimeters in every one centimeter. So now, like I said, we can treat these units like we would algebra. If you were to multiply this number by this fraction, if we're treating these like we would an algebraic variable, the centimeters cancel out, right? This is in the numerator, that's in the denominator, they're both the same, so they're going to cancel out. So since they cancel out, what we need to do is just multiply 45.3 by 10, and that's going to give us the proper number of millimeters here. So this will be 453 
millimeters as a result. Right, so basically using these units as algebra, right, we get these, these units canceling out and we end up with the proper number in millimeters. So let's do another example. So let's say that we have 4.48 pounds, pounds being a, a unit of weight, right? So we have, um, or unit of, of mass, right? So we have 4.48 pounds and we want to know how many grams is that, right? So we want to convert this 4.48 pounds to grams. So we're going to need the conversion factor. So the conversion factor here is that one pound is going to be equal to 453.59 grams, right? So we have our conversion factor. So I'll say CF to abbreviate conversion factor. So our conversion factor, like I said, relating one unit of one, um, of one dimension to the other, right? So now we have everything we need to convert between these two. So 4.48 pounds, right? And we know that for every one pound, there are 453.59 grams. And so doing the conversion here, we get 2,032.09 grams, right, as our result, right? And you can see here again, right, and I'll use pounds even though this is really, you know, one, but just to show that they cancel out, right, the pounds here cancels out with the pounds in the denominator, and so you're left with just grams as a result. Right, so, um, so you end up with these units canceling out if you just treat them like you would treat algebra, right? So let's look at an example problem. So I'm gonna go to the next slide here. And this is kind of like a, a dimensional analysis problem in disguise, right? So the, the problem says, for a pharmacist dispensing pills or capsules, it is often easier to weigh the medication to be dispensed rather than count the individual pills. If a single antibiotic capsule weighs 0.65 grams and a pharmacist weighs out 15.6 grams of capsules, how many capsules have been dispensed? Right. So basically what you're trying to do here is convert your 15.6 grams of pills to um, or 15.6 grams to pills. Right. So you have 15.6 grams. Let me use a different color here. Right. So you have 15.6 grams. Right. And we want to know how many pills is that? Right. So just like they say in the problem, right, it's easier to just pour out a certain number of pills until you reach a mass than trying to count out all of the individual pills. Now, in this question, we were given a conversion factor. It said a single antibiotic capsule weighs 0.65 grams. So that's telling us the conversion factor. Is that one pill weighs 0 0.65 grams, right? So we have our conversion factor. We know what we want to convert here. So we have our 15.6 grams, right? And we know that there's 0 0.65 grams for every one pill, right? Every pill weighs 0 0.65 grams. So see, in this case, we have to actually divide by this 0 0.65 given in the conversion factor. And if you're just trying to guess, you might not know immediately that you need to divide rather than multiply, but you always get the right answer if you set up the conversion factor in this way where your units cancel out. So see our grams cancel out with our grams there. So then we're left with the final answer here. We get about 24 pills as a result of this weight of 15.6 grams, right? So we looked at a few different cases where dimensional analysis can be useful and a few examples of doing these unit conversions. This is going to be a very uh, useful skill for you to have a grasp of 
going forward. What we're going to do in this class is actually introduce some new dimensions that you might be unfamiliar with. And so making sure that you understand the nuts and bolts of how to do these conversions will make that process of learning new dimensions that much easier for you.